So I am Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. And today I'm going to teach some five pointed stars and some patterns that are pretty to go on those. The, I have quite a bit of supplies that I have set out here, but they're not required. So I have a handful of jelly roll pins. I have my Micron. I have some watercolor pencils because I want to show you, you know, something that you can do if you want. And then my tortillons and a variety of papers and tiles, you know, um, the stars in different types of paper. And I think uh, Loretta, you have the construction paper and I think Linda, you have some of that shiny paper and also some of the white stars, correct? Yes. Okay. Do it on the white for my first one. Okay. So I'm going to show you some of the things that I've already done just to give you some ideas. This is um, one of the larger stars. Let me measure that for you if I can reach my ruler. If I go across on this one, it is six and a half, no, six inches across at this widest part. Okay. And I did them in a variety of sizes just because I wanted to get an idea of what I could do. This is droop, uh, flux, paradox, crescent moon. And this is Ibex. And I'm going to teach you this one today. It is one that is not published by Zentangle. You can find a step out through tanglelist.com or a video, but it's not published and it's supposed to be taught by CZTs. And I think that's a really pretty one. I'll show you one that I did strictly with that oh. pattern. So wow. this is on the kind of a little shiny construction paper with five different jelly rolls. And I think I warned you guys not to fold your tiles ahead of time, right? Right. Because it makes it a little bit difficult to do, to tie, tangle on it. Um, here's one that is done with Mary Hill in the center. And Linda, have you done that one? Hey, Kathy. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. We're just talking about some of the things that I've already done. Um, this is Mary Hill in the center. And on the outside, it is Facet 2. Now, part of the Inktober Tangles, I taught Facet in one of those videos. And this one is Facet 2. F-A-S-S-E-T-T-O-O. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do this one because it turns out pretty cool. And I think that's it. Um, I wanted to show you this one that I did. I went ahead and put tangles on it. And then I used watercolors to color it. This is kind of a shimmery watercolor. And that one did just fine. And where is the one? Oh, OK. And then I did this one with some um, not waterproof pins and then put watercolor on top and you can see that it's smeared. So that's yeah. another, don't mm. do this. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you learn a lot when you're trying to do a bunch of tiles. <laughs> and then um, this is the same Wow. <laughs> As that first wow. one that I showed you, that's Mary Hill with Facet 2 and same thing on this one. And so I'm going to start by showing you how to do this one. So you can pick whatever size um, star that you have. Now first, just watch. And I have gone ahead and done this so you don't have to watch me draw a circle 
and the lines, but I'm just going to basically show you how this works. And this is the name of it, Mary Hill by Betsy Wilson, CZT. And basically, all we do is we're going to aura this top line. And then we're going to try to keep it, you know, about the same as far as your aura each time. But from here to here, we're going to go down to the center. And if it's not exact, like if it stops right there, that's fine. And then we're going to go down again and come across, stop at about the same point, bring that down to the center. I'm going to try to do this a little faster because we're going to do it on one of these stars. Come down. And I'm not super consistent on keeping my auras exactly the same, but it's not going to matter. It's still going to be pretty. So again, you keep coming down to that center point. Then when, when you run out of room, you stop, okay? And what sets it off is when you take your graphite pencil or if you're doing this in a different color, a pastel pen or whatever, and then shade it, that's when you get kind of a pinwheel effect, okay? So, I would say get out your biggest star that you have. If you have a white one, that'd be good. And then later you can practice this on the other stars. Or you can do it on, on any color. We lost Linda. <laughs> <laughs> And basically, we're going to put a star in here by just making, and I have my pencil, okay, with your graphite pencil. From point to point, we're just going to put a curve. Okay, and then turn, do that same thing. I'm going to try to make them match. Just keep turning and making a curve. It's a lot easier to make a circle a little bit at a time than trying to make a big one. And I don't want to use a compass, although you could if you want to get this just right. Okay. Is that dark enough for you to see what I did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then once you have that done, go ahead and take your pen. If you want to do this in any color pen, feel free to do it. I'm going to now go over that line with my pen. And if you need to do a little correction, for your circle while you're going across this, then that's fine. Kathy, were you able to cut some tiles on your Cricut? I did, I figured it out. I found the star topper you were talking about. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So let's find the lines. If you have uh, the ones that I did for you, where it has the crease, we're going to put a line towards the center, just on the ones that come from these lower points. We're going to ignore the one that comes down the center. 
and then just bring your lines down to the center. Oop. That's what I meant to do on the first one that I showed you and ended up not skipping those longer points. And that's why I ended up with so many on this one, but it's pretty, I still like it. And this, well, this has uneven numbers, but I was gonna say you could you know, put a different color pin in each one of these if you wanted to. Or you can color it after we get it uh, tangled, which is what I've done on some of my others. Okay, so now we're going to start doing that aura. We're going to start at this corner. We're going to aura. And then leave your space and bring that line down to the center point. Go down about the same amount. Stop at about the same place so that these are starting to line up. Bring it down to the center. This is the kind of pattern that I love to do like when I'm listening to an audiobook or something where it doesn't take a lot of thinking. Just a lot of re repetitive lines. Okay, if you get one filled, then just go to the next. Oops, I almost went all the way to the edge. And if any of you decide that you want more stars, I've got this all set up on my Cricut. Kathy has it set up on her Cricut. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> I can get more to you if you want them. Uh, in the email that I sent you, I showed the way that Claire had them as a wall decoration, but I'm not sure how she put them together. Linda, do you know? No, I don't. It may have been just on a, uh, almost like a, a, a ribbon, a paint, you know, like a paint stick that you could uh, glue it onto or uh, oh, okay, something like that, but I'm not really sure. She used different colors of stars. Um, lots of variety of patterns it was beautiful Oops. this one can start to make you dizzy too yeah <laughs>
remember to breathe, <laughs> relax, <laughs> relax your shoulders, relax your hand, turn your tile. How's everybody doing? Good. It's not a difficult pattern. <laughs> so the latest CZ, CZT seminar is going on right now. Oh, really? It's all online. So are you going to it? Oh, no. It's still the same price, even though it's online, and I could only wow. afford it. I can only afford it one time. Wow. It is expensive. Yes. It's seventeen hundred dollars. Goodness. Does everybody have their stuff? Yes. Awesome. No. no? Not quite. Okay. Y'all are fast. <laughs> well, the next thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to outline these triangles that are left on these other long points. So you can go ahead and do that. And it's difficult for me to keep a nice straight line, but it, it's fine. I think I do better if I'm pointing at the edge. Oops. And the Micron pins are permanent and they're waterproof. So like I said, if you wanted to color these with markers or uh, I'll show you how I did it with watercolors. Because what I have is a card stock. Oops. And it doesn't do real well with putting a lot of water on it. So I'll show you an alternative. Uh, and that's using the Gamsol. I think you all have, you have some, don't you, Loretta? Yes, I have some. Okay. Yes, I have it. Okay. And you don't have to have it with you today. I'm just gonna show you how I did mine. So just let me know when you're caught up. I'm ready.
Okay, so did any of you watch the Facet video okay. in Inktober? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, well, I'm going to show you. Facet was basically, uh, if you were looking at a triangle, then you put a triangle inside, and then you put another triangle inside. And again, and again. And then with this one, then you brought the lines in the corners together. And that's Facet. And that's by um, Lynn Mead. CZT. Now, Facet 2 is F-A-S-S-E-T-T-0-0, -T zero zero, which is, not zero zero, O-O, oh, oh, which is basically, she calls it a tangulation, but she also gave it a new name. So with that one, we're going to do it this way. And I'm going to keep turning my tile counterclockwise. And then we turn Add another line. And keep turning until we fill it, or you can leave some space in the center. Okay, so this is facet two. All right. And we're gonna do that on the outside of this star. Okay, so that's how I did this part. We're gonna start at the bottom of the curve, okay? And we're gonna start adding R's. I'm gonna turn mine, mine counterclockwise. You do it however you want, but just make sure you turn your tile the same each time. And then we're just going to keep adding these auras until you fill it as much as you want to. You could leave enough in here if you wanted to add another pattern in the center. I'm trying to make my R is about the same as what I did on Mary Hill. Okay. And just keep doing that. Going around. Remembering to start at the bottom of your triangle, of your star point. We lost Loretta. I'm here. Oh, I didn't see you. I was thinking maybe if you had those uh, things that I cut for you on the cricket, you could show them. The Christmas cutouts. Uh huh. A 
Okay, ladies, she uh, cut me a circle. One has Christmas tree cut out in the middle. And then the other one, I had her cut an angel in the middle. That's cute. And then she has two colors and she's going to hang them with possibly oh. a, a bead in the center. Nice. Like we did our kind of Valentine's things that time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, she asked me if I could cut something like that, like we did for the Valentine's. Yeah, I have fun when I finally figure out how to use my Cricut. I have a, had a brother cutting machine and I got so frustrated trying to figure it out. I pass it on to my daughter. <laughs> Well, Victoria got me hooked on it because she used to do so many cool things for our Zentangle classes. Has she said when she'll probably be moving? No, there's too much going on as far as trying to go through probate and everything and with her husband. Marie trying to sell that house before this happened. Right, she has the house that went through the flood, which has to be sold. And then she has so much stuff um, in that new house that she's got to get rid of before she can move. She's a collector. Where's she uh, moving? California. That's where oh, her family wow. is. Wow. Aww. Yeah, well, she doesn't have family here in League City. Her sister is in California, and I think her son plans to go there. So uh, it just be she'll have more family support. Yeah. Yeah, I can't blame her, but I have no idea how long it's going to take. Her son is staying with her now, but uh, don't know how long he can do that. Even though she knew it was coming, it still didn't make it any easier. No, she still wasn't prepared. Right. Yeah, the nice thing about having the recording is that you can fast forward through some of this stuff. And on YouTube, you can even increase the speed like to two times the normal speed or you can slow it down if you need to. So for anyone who's watching the recording, feel, feel, feel free to fast forward, okay. There we go. There's our um, thing for making us dizzy. <laughs> Did you get the newest project pack? No. Did you? Mm -mm. It was almost $40. I was curious what was in it. Yeah, I'll just wait and let somebody tell me what's in it, and then I'll decide <laughs> if, uh, if I want to buy it. Yeah. 
I've just spent too much lately on supplies and stuff. So no, nope, but I didn't buy it this time. Okay, if you want to go ahead and shade it, like I say, we're going to start in this corner. And then we're just going to have our graphite come across each of these corners until you get down to the center. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a fair amount. And do that on each one of these. Um, like I said, on that facet pattern, I taught that in the Inktober Tangles. I taught 31 patterns. That was quite a I think, challenge. I think I'm on day 10. <laughs> okay, cool. Then you'll get to see facet when you get to it. Yeah, there, there was more than one time I said, you, you committed to what? <laughs> <laughs> but it was really good. I, I'm very glad that I did it. And then once you have that on there, I don't have my... Then just take your tortillon and with little circles, just kind of soften it a little bit. How are you doing, Kathy? Are you caught up? Mm, pretty much. <laughs> okay. I don't know why I'm slow today. That's okay. It's been a day already, so. Yeah, I understand. With the facet two that we have up here in the top, I'm going to add graphite and just go across where the lines meet and bring that down to the corner. Do that going up to the top. And then on each side. And then you'll use your tortillon to soften that. Stage, but I'll be
There's a lady on Facebook, Sonia Yenser, a CZT that has a Sunday tangle group. She only charges 20 a month. And if you can't pay that, then she doesn't worry about it. But she's the one that I learned facet two from. And she has just fantastic ideas. My mind is pretty simple. <laughs> but um, this is the one that I learned from her. Oh, and that's great. facet two in a circle. Oh, wow. Yeah, that oh. was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed that one. I have this one on a tan tile. And then I used um, pastel pencils to shade it. Okay, so um, where's this? Like on this one, you know, you could go with different colors to add color to what you already have here. I know you have the graphite down, but if you did another one, you could do various colors, use pastel pencils or colored pencils to color it in. You could leave this a little bigger and put a pattern inside of those triangles. You can just do all kinds of things with that. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to fold this. Um, you have a line that goes down to the center from each of these long points. And so I'm just going to bend it. I don't know. I don't think that line's going to show up on the screen, but it's right down here. And I'm just going to fold that carefully down the center. If it's scored, then it should fold pretty evenly just until I reach the center. And then I'm pinching it down. Okay, And we're going to do just those long points first. If you happened to have printed, uh, where did it go? I had the printed one. Printed the one that came in that document, and I will have it in the link. Um, she has it printed, but you're going to want to tangle, of course, on the opposite side of where she has the lines printed. Okay, we're just going to keep folding just those long points. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and see if that helps. If I can get to it. Well, it's not letting me do it. Okay. So when you have each one of those done, it's easy enough to just fold those two together. And then you can just reach underneath and kind of crease the one that's in the center. That's the easiest way I have found. Just fold them together until they meet and then crease it from the bottom. If you can tell. Okay. And do that all the way around. You can't even kind of flatten the star if you need to.
There you have it. You have your star. I did green. Oh, cool. I love it. And I did the shading with a pastel green. Oh, awesome. And okay. then you can't see the little dots on here, but in the little dots, gold. Pretty Loretta. Oh, awesome. I want to see Loretta. Let's see. Let me find you in here. Oh, pretty. That's nice. Pretty. Awesome. I'm still folding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so while you're doing that, I'm going to show you this one. This is Paradox. And I just used, you know, the lines that were here for the creases for the triangles in the center. And then I just divided these out here. This one is actually a square. So see if I can show you. This I left is kind of an odd square and then triangles on this end. Does that make sense? So here I use those center lines that were our triangles and I did paradox. Out here, it was kind of a square, and then down here was two um, triangles. And the way that I colored it is with, um, I have Prismacolor watercolor pencils. And so I just, let's do this one different. I just colored it. And I like doing it this way because it doesn't get the paper so wet. And how did I do that? I'm trying to make them kind of match. And then let's do this one with green. And then I use the Gamsol. And Gamsol is just an odorless mineral spirit. And I have it poured into this little jar that has a sponge in it. And the one thing you have to remember about an odorless mineral spirit, it still is releasing toxic fumes. Not terrible, but just keep that in mind that you don't want to continue to breathe that for long. I have um, a blending stump where I have written on here, wet, Gamsol, so I know that I only use it for that. And I'm going to put it in here to get the tip of it wet. And I clean it by just rubbing it down here until I don't see any color coming off. So now I'm going to use that to just smooth out the color on my cardstock. And if I turn it over, see it's not coming through. Where with water, it might bleed through and kind of warp your paper. Uh -huh. So I'm cleaning it now. I'm gonna stick it in there again. And now I'm going to do the red. So this is just an idea. If you're using cardstock that you got from me or you cut it on your own from the printout, this is one way that you can color it. Okay. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. All right. The next pattern that... I want to show you is the one that I did here. And that is Ibex and it is from Zentangle. It's very much like uh, Printom, but you basically start 
with a spiral. And you can make it as big or as small as you want. And then you come off, kind of make a loop coming back around. And then you're going to do another spiral. And then they come off of the inside part of this spiral. And you're going to come out. And do another one, same thing down here. Come out from that and make another spiral. And you can continue coming off of these or you can do another set of spirals. And then we're gonna go in where we have little openings and put auras inside like that. And one of the nice things I like is they put dots around. You could put another little aura here. You can fill these in however you want. Or you could just put little stripes. OK, like I said, you could come off of the top of one of these and do another spiral and then come off this one and do another spiral. And then you can just keep going from there. Add little dots here. You could add dots on the inside, you know, embellish it however you want. Okay, so we're going to do that on another tile. Um, the one that I did was with um, jelly rolls. So I'm going to do that again. I do encourage you to test your jelly rolls. <laughs> this is what I did last night and a few nights, you know, testing all the different colors that I have to see how they're going to look. And I think I gave each of you pieces of the stars so that you could test them and try your jelly rolls. It's a good idea to do that anyway, to make sure that your jelly roll is working before you start on your um, tile. So I'm going to do mine on this one. And this is a green. I don't know if you can tell. Okay. It's kind of a shimmery green. And I'm going to do it the same as I did this one. And I'm going to put the spirals a different color in each corner of the star. I think green's not going to work. I'm going to start with white. I have a, and you can do all white. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do on this one. You can switch colors if you want. But I'm going to put all white on this one. I'm going to make sure my pen is working and clean. On a jelly roll, it's generally best if you'll just do a soft touch and just let the ink flow. OK? Pressing down too hard doesn't necessarily work very well. So on this one, I'm going to start with a spiral in the center of my lines. I'm going to bring it around and create another spiral. Now I'm going to come off of the center part of this one, come around and add another spiral. And then inside of this one, I'm going to put that aura, put another one up here at the top. And then I'm going to fill mine in. I like how it looked on this one. 
I'm going to fill in those little triangular auras. And be mindful that your jelly roll is going to be wet. So be careful. I think between these, I'm going to put some little dots. I like how the dots look. Okay. Coming off the bottom of this one, start another spiral. Add an aura in between. Don't have enough room there, so I'm just going to put a dot. And then I'm just going to continue adding this ibex. Melinda Barlow has a um, video that she did for teaching this. But she doesn't exactly follow the step out. So I'm trying to do a little bit better to show you what the step out shows. You can put your dots inside or outside of your spiral. Make them any size. Um, okay, another thing I want to show you real quick is weighted. Have you seen weighted print on? Yes. Okay, so another thing you can do on this is make them weighted. If you're going to do it, I would encourage you to put your weighting on the same side of all of these. So you basically just come and bring it down, bring your line down a little bit. I really like the effect of that. I don't know if that you could get the same effect with the jelly roll, but you could try it. Where I have the dots, I'm going to go on the inside a little bit. Okay, so this is how it looks with the weighting. And if you want to, you can put whatever patterns you want. You don't have to fill this with Ibex if you don't want to. This is your art. I'm just showing you the pattern. It's nice to add a variety of sizes on your spirals.
sometimes out of these seminars, they release a new pattern. Be interested to see if they do that. One of my friends from Houston is there. Well, she's taking it virtual. <laughs> she's virtually there. Another one that would go really well on this is Ah. Do you guys know what that one is? By Zentangle. I don't think so. Ah is simply, and it's A H H, is you do a circle and then you come out and put another circle. It ends up looking kind of like a snowflake. And your little spokes on this don't have to all be the same. And doing that one in different colors is really pretty on one of these. Okay, so that's ah, uh, very simple. And it's really pretty if you go back and add, if you make these a little bit bigger, you can go back and put color in these dots. This is a very interesting jelly roll pen. It's called Jelly Roll Gold. And it comes out in a really pretty red and then it turns gold. Wow. Yeah, I got if you're, some of those. Yeah, but to me, it's a little frustrating because I meant to put that red on this one and right here it turned gold, which is yeah. fine, but it wasn't what I was expecting. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, very simple. And very Christmassy or wintery, I guess I should say. And you have big open spaces between your spirals, just aura inside and either fill them in or put lines. And again, being careful if you're using a jelly roll, because they don't dry very fast.
Somebody's got an unhappy doggy. Yeah, my husband went outside, so she's like, where are you going? Why didn't I get to go? <laughs> can we mute that for now? <laughs> I can shut well, the door. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. But since it's being recorded, it's yeah, good to mute it if we can. <sighs> Trying to figure out how to get my hand so that I don't Put it on top of what I've already done. So I am going to try to figure out how to get all these together, similar to what Claire did, and have them hang on a ribbon or something. Loretta, maybe you can show us when you get those other things done with the tree and the angel. Show us what it looks like when you're done with it. Okay.
You can connect these however you want. I just really like how this one looks. So has anybody started their Christmas shopping? We're, a little we're, bit. We're just all going to the whole family to a beach house for Christmas. And oh, how cool is that? Where are you going? To uh, Galveston. Okay. Uh, and that's our Christmas. <laughs> that's our Christmas present. Right. Yeah, we haven't decided what we're doing yet. Probably just staying home. But I'm trying to get shopping done online as soon as possible because they say, you know, the amount of deliveries will be so much more than ever before. Right, yeah. And so they said order early. So I've been ordering craft supplies. Oh, wait, that's not Christmas. If you make some of your spirals kind of wide, it makes it easy to put dots inside. You might end up, if you're using a jelly roll, you might have to clean the tip. And I just get a, that scrap piece of paper and draw on it. Sometimes I have to kind of lean it on the side to clean the tip, just roll it. That helps. And like on this one didn't work very well, so I'm having to go over it again. Oh, I had to pop away for a minute. I have pretty much all my Christmas shopping done for the grandkids. Oh, cool. Wonderful. Well, when you only have one and he's 14, oh, <laughs> it's, uh, it had to shop too much. <laughs> I have five. Oh, wow. Yep. Mm. 
Loretta, how old are your twin granddaughters? It's a boy and a girl. They're 14. Oh, okay. And I ship the grandson's thing. I ship all their stuff to their mama. And y'all right. know how when you order from Amazon, you forever getting all these boxes that was unnecessary. Why I oh. ship him some roller safes for Christmas and all of a sudden Amazon doesn't put it in a box to hide it. Oh. He okay. calls his mama tell my at work and say, there's some roller skates on the front porch. Oh, oh no. Well, all my grandkids are local, so I'll have to have it delivered to me. Usually they ask you, is this a gift? Uh -huh. Right, and I forgot to on that package to mark that. Oh, okay. Is it roller skates or roller blades? I did roller blades for him. Okay. How's everybody doing? Good. I'm holding. Like I said, for anyone watching the recording, they can just zoom past having to watch this again and again and again. Yeah. I think my pen is giving up. Well, it, at least it waited till you were finished. <laughs> Mostly. It looks black, but it's not. It's that green. It's very pretty. Thank you. Um. Oh, here it is. Okay, here's the one. If you use that document link that I sent you, mm -hmm. then you print it out like this, but the lines aren't scored. But if you have an old pen or something like that, um, you can score them. This is the scoring tip from my uh, Cricut. So I can just use that and go down the line and just press really good and score it in each of those places. If you have an ink pen that doesn't work, you can use that to score. So I've just scored that. 
in each of those places. And then of course you would do your patterns on the other side. This one's already messed up, but um, this helps you to be able to fold it. So if you want to print more using this, or if you want me to cut some for you, or anything like I did for Loretta, you can just let me know. The only thing I didn't like about the document for printing these is it only had one star. So you kind of waste paper if you're only cutting one star off of each. I'll show you print. what. Go ahead. I uh, copied and pasted it and then made different sizes. Oh, cool. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so uh, was somebody going to say something? I was going to show you the two I have. Oh, pretty. Well, send me pictures of it because I can only see a small picture because okay. I have to keep this one pinned. Right. Yeah, I'd like to see that. So now I'm folding the one that we just did. Again, do the, the long ones first. And I didn't add any kind of shading as far as on these that I've done with the jelly roll. Uh, you could go back in and add little pots of gold, jelly roll, mm -hmm. things like that. Oh, and I do have, I think I've shown you guys, um, Loretta had shown me on Instagram, not Instagram, Amazon, that they had these three inch tiles. They're wooden. They're these wooden blocks. And I used my watercolors to paint them. And then I just used a Micron pen. This is Awe. And then I just did uh, a little tree and filled it with print on. And if you wanted to, I have tested it. Um, I could drill a hole in the top and then use it for a Christmas ornament or you could uh, spray it and use it like a coaster. Mm -hmm. But for those of you who are local to me, if you're interested, I do have several of these. I, I bought a box of them and they are not available on Amazon now. They're out of stock, but they're three inch square. And this one I used kind of a metallic watercolor, but it tended to spot, you know, in corners, certain places, but uh, I haven't tried tangling on top of that one yet. All right, so I have various sizes that I've cut and tried different things, just testing for the class. I can't get my phone to let me zoom in or out, but um, there we have it. Lots of different things that you can do. Wow. If you do any more of these, send me some pictures. I want to see them. Okay. And if, you, if you figure out a way to do them similar to what Claire did as far as hanging them all together, that would be cool. Um, these I did... I don't know if you can tell, they're kind of shimmery with that um, Lindy's Magicals 
watercolor and this is just cardstock. It did pretty good. And you can Great. tangle on top. This is with a gold. So here we go, ladies. Love it. <laughs> uh, Yay. <laughs> well, thank you. I hope you had fun. This and was fun. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next uh, with my daughter being in retail. Her schedule is only going to get worse as far as as we get closer to Christmas. Yeah. But uh, well, let us know when you're available. All right, I will. Okay, so if you stayed with me to the end, I apologize that um, I had a few issues with my phone, but I now have it pulled back, zoomed out so that you can see what I've done. Um, these are just plain, small stars that I've done. And again, I cut these on my Cricut and I'm finding that it's probably easier to work with white than some of the other colors, but uh, I can cut them. If anyone's interested, you can contact me at um, notperfectzen at gmail.com. I will tell you that I have found that shipping, because I use a padded envelope, shipping is $5 and that's just a little outrageous. Um, if I did the smaller tiles, I don't have flat envelopes. I've got bubble envelopes, which is what um, makes the price go up. But again, this is one that I did with a pen that was not waterproof. And I wasn't thinking about it when I put a metallic color on top of it, just a metallic watercolor and it made these patterns bleed. I did the same thing on this one. It's a white one. And I put the Lindy's Magicals color on top and it did pretty good. It uh, didn't warp too bad. This one is kind of a metallic, shiny cardstock. Um, it's scrapbook paper. And I just used a white jelly roll on this one. Uh, this is the one that I just showed during the class. I did it strictly with jelly roll on this kind of a shiny cardstock paper. I like that one a lot. This is the one that we just finished in class and I have now creased it. This is the one that was completed in class. This is just white cardstock, but you could do this in a multitude of colors and it would be really pretty. This is one that I did to begin with. It's just, again, white cardstock, Paradox, Flux, Droop, Ibex, and Crescent Moon. And then this is also the pattern that I taught in class. This is Mary Hill. And this is Facet 2 on the ends on a white cardstock. And then I used a blue pastel pencil in the center and a kind of a maroon pastel pencil on the outside points. And then I also put the pastel pencil around the edges. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. I think it was fun. And um, I hope you'll join me again. I don't know what I'm doing next, but um, if you enjoyed the video, please, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I hope to see you again. Thanks. Bye.